the current rate of human activity, the planet is likely to reach a global average temperature increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial levels. Dramatic changes such as hotter temperatures, heavier precipitation, terrible droughts, and continuous sea level rise are already observed across the world, including the Philippines, one of the countries deemed most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. This prompted leading Philippine life insurer ProLife UK to release in 2021 an independent study written by planetary health experts Dr. Renzo Ginto and Dr. Katrina Ceballos that explored the health impacts of climate change and their potential pressures on the financial security and well-being of Filipino families. Released coinciding with the United Nations or UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties or COP26, the study showed that there is no disease group that is immune to the effects of climate change. Proving that climate change is not just an environmental issue, it is a matter of human health and survival. Climate change affects health directly, such as in the case of heat stroke, due to exposure to extreme heat or indirectly, when climate change alters the environmental conditions for mosquito-borne diseases like dengue and malaria. According to the paper, in the Philippines, these disease conditions are expected to increase in a world of climate change. Injuries and death due to more intense typhoons and flooding. Heat-related illnesses, such as heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Vector-borne diseases, such as dengue and malaria. Soil-borne diseases, such as hookworm, roundworm, and schistosomiasis. Water-borne diseases, such as leptospirosis, due to exposure to contaminated water. Food-borne diseases, due to contaminated food and rapid spoilage. Emerging infectious diseases with pandemic potential, such as COVID-19. Cardiorespiratory diseases due to air and other forms of pollution produced by fossil fuels, the same culprits of the climate crisis. Water pollution, such as salinization of water due to sea level rise in coastal areas. Forced displacement of communities due to typhoons, storm surges, and coastal flooding. The co-occurrence of undernutrition and obesity, resulting from climate-unfriendly food systems. Mental health conditions, emanating from both abrupt disasters and slow-onset environmental change. So since the release of our study last year uh, in November uh, 2021, there have been numerous uh, studies and reports that have been released by different scientists from around the world regarding the intersection between climate and health. So for example, uh, a few months ago, uh, there was a report saying that uh, continuous climate change will increase the risk of uh, future pandemics or zoonotic spillover events, events when uh, a past pathogen jumps from an animal to a human being, just like COVID-19. Um, and unfortunately, the hotspot for pandemics uh, such as COVID-19 is Southeast Asia, where the Philippines is located. So that's one report that highlighted the uh, influence of the changing climate into human health, in particular to increase transmission of diseases. Another report is regarding uh, the impact of climate change on, on mental health. In fact, there was a 10-country uh, study that was conducted and it found out that among the young people of those 10 countries, it is the Filipino young people who are the most climate anxious and worried uh, among those countries you know, in the world. And, and that speaks to the direct experience of our young people uh, of climate change, uh, but also the growing uncertainty uh, about their future that make is making them very, very concerned. There is something dangerous ahead of us, but we are not sure what it is, and we need to prepare still, although we don't know what it will be, right? But that's not a great excuse not to do anything, is it? Uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic has been 
painful enough for all of us and it's still ongoing. So I think while there isn't a simple 100% answer, there are quite a few things we can actually do and we can leverage our learnings from the existing pandemic. For example, we do know that most pandemics uh, have some origins in the uh, animal species, which may differ. It may be bats, for example, or something else, but some zoonotic origin, as they say, from animals. So one learning from uh, the current pandemic could be uh, a better regulation of the live animal markets. Um, the risk will be still there, and it will depend what the next pandemic will be, but this is a good measure to reduce it. Now, I think we also need good capacities uh, for laboratories. Uh, we need to monitor things, because until you've detected something, it's hard to manage it. But generally speaking, if you've got good surveillance systems, that's definitely a big help. Last but not least, or perhaps uh, the main learning, we should try to summarize what we've seen in the current pandemic and develop a generic playbook, a pandemic playbook. So to say, which measures can we take based on which data so that next time our reactions are more coordinated are practical and better accepted by the society. I think this is easier said than done, of course, and such a playbook can never be frozen in time for a few decades, stay the same and always helpful. So it needs being adapted just as we are learning something new. But it would be very helpful to allow all of us react to our next threat in a more systematic, in a more holistic way. So I think that uh, the new and emerging health risks induced by climate change that the Philippine government will need to seriously, seriously consider are first, uh, the increase in infectious diseases, particularly those that are uh, spread by mosquitoes, because mosquitoes are very uh, sensitive to the changing climate, and that can lead to increases in dengue outbreaks and even malaria, which we have been trying to eliminate for several decades now. Uh, we should also anticipate uh, more uh, disease conditions related to exposure to intense heat, uh, what we call heat-related illnesses. And um, we can anticipate more people uh, showing up in the emergency room, uh, feeling uh, really uh, dehydrated uh, and, and not okay because of the warmer uh, climate that people will be experiencing. Uh, and also, uh, there is a growing evidence that climate change is going to affect our brains and hearts as well. Uh, there's a new concept called climate anxiety, which is already affecting many young people today because of their direct experience of climate change, as well as the growing uh, uncertainty of uh, their future lives, uh, again brought about the climate crisis. To protect the Filipinos from the health impacts of climate change, the study calls on various stakeholders to build adaptation and resilience to this pressing global challenge. What can Filipinos do to protect their health from climate change? Five urgent actions have been recommended. Number one, from now on, climate change must be viewed as a public health issue. Number two, Rapid decarbonization to stabilize the climate will be good, not just for the planet, but for people's health too. Number three, building societal resilience to climate change and its health effects is also an urgent priority since climate change is already happening. Number four, communicate climate and health knowledge to all citizens to raise awareness and equip them with tools to contribute to both mitigation and adaptation. Number five, financial security at all levels is a climate adaptation measure. So since the release of the report, um, there have been uh, different actions uh, done by 
uh, different Philippine organizations, uh, government agencies in order to address climate change. Uh, but I would say that Uh, more needs to be done still, uh, especially in the area of both uh, mitigation, lowering our carbon emissions, but much more importantly, adaptation. The Philippines is at the heart of the climate crisis and the effects of climate change, especially on human health, uh, will be inevitably experienced by our people. And so it's very important that we uh, enhance our disaster risk uh, management and reduction systems. Uh, we need to strengthen the capacity of the health sector to be able to address these climate-related challenges, uh, especially that our health sector has been uh, greatly overwhelmed by the still ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And therefore, it will be really challenging to also uh, enhance our capacity to address uh, the health impacts of climate change, such as, such as increasing uh, infectious disease transmission or uh, the mental health effects of climate change. Uh, exposure to extreme heat, uh, undernutrition that will be exacerbated because of growing food insecurity as a result of the climate crisis, among others. Uh, just as important, if not more important, are policies. We need to mitigate the risk by taking appropriate measures. Perhaps just one example, uh, quite topical for the Philippines. Many people live in large cities, even more people will live in large cities in the future. So it's really important to allow for climate change in urban planning and in architecture, because some houses are a lot more adapted for this challenge than other houses. Such work is already underway, notably in the Philippines, and I believe such Uh, qualitative process answers are definitely not less, perhaps even more important. We are facing a very complex phenomenon, climate change, and that's not just one effect. It's not just about temperature, it's not about melting ice caps, it's not about just humidity, it's not about just 10 or just 20 impacts. Everything seems intertwined and hard to capture. So what can we do? So in order for Filipinos to be able to uh, mitigate the effects of climate change in the long run, uh, there is a need for uh, greater preparedness, at, even at the level of the household. Uh, one is that we have a ready uh, disaster kit so that when calamity strikes, we have the essentials in order to address our immediate needs. But also greater financial protection is certainly going to help so that when your house gets inundated by intense flooding or you have uh, some major hospitalization as a result of climate-related disease, your family, your household will be able to address the financial needs uh, incurred uh, by these climate-related uh, impacts. So among the disease conditions that will be affected by climate change, some of the main ones that really require uh, greater financial protection are One, uh, injuries and diseases and deaths related to extreme weather events such as typhoons and intense flooding. And the other one is uh, infectious diseases like dengue and other mosquito-borne diseases. Why are these uh, diseases should be uh, the priority? Um, These, uh, these disease conditions impact uh, many poor people in the Philippines. And these poor people, the poor populations, uh, already have very limited financial capacity to address uh, their needs. Uh, what more when disaster strikes and therefore there will be a greater need for uh, financial support to not only meet their needs, but also to be able to recover. So at least those are the two conditions where greater financial protection is needed. But I can also say that um, there has to be a uh, comprehensive financial protection and security for all kinds of diseases that will be impacted by the climate.